Hi, in this video we'll be looking again at cross elasticity of demand, but now with more of a focus on substitutes and complement. So what values of this XED are going to give us substitutes and what value will give us complements? So we'll begin again with the XED equation, which is written here and percentage change in quantity demanded of good one divided by percentage change in price of good two. So if we look at this equation, how are we going to know what values of XED are substitutes and what are complements? So we can begin with substitutes and we'll see here we've got that substitutes are going to have a positive cross elasticity of demand. Now why is this? Well, if we look at our XED equation, we can consider that we have a positive change in price of good two. Uh, so, well, it's our price of good two is going to increase. So if we plug just some positive value into our equation above that we have here, we have a positive increase in the price of good two. And if we are now thinking about the percentage change in quantity demanded of good one, let's consider that we have some positive change in quantity demanded of good one. So an increase in price of good two has caused an increase in quantity demanded of good one. So we've got positive on the top and bottom. So this will equal some positive value. It could be say a thousand or it could be 0 0.2 or something. But the point is that it is positive if we have both positive on the top and bottom of our equation. And that's what we've got here. An increase in price of good one causes an increase in demand for the other good. And we know that this is for substitutes because increasing the price of one good is going to cause us to demand more of the other good. And this will only be true for substitute goods, as in two goods which serve the same purpose. So if the price of one goes up, we will switch and consume a different one. So we've used the example of Xbox and PS4 or PlayStation, shall we say. So if we were to increase the price of Xboxes, well, people would buy fewer Xboxes and instead buy more Playstations, all else being equal. So the demand for Playstations would go up, we'd increase our quantity, and so we'd have a positive over a positive, and that would give us a positive cross elasticity. So that's why substitutes have a positive cross elasticity of demand. Our final point here is that close substitutes have a higher cross elasticity of demand and we can see that Xboxes and Playstations probably are close substitutes as in they do serve very much the same purpose although many people will say that there are great differences between them they're, they're both sort of video game consoles and they have similar entertainment systems in them and they can play very similar games although there are some exclusive games on them but yes, they are very close substitutes. So the quantity demanded changes more in response to a change in price. So we can again look at our XED formula at the top of the screen. And we'll see that if we have some change in price of good two, let's say we have a 10% change in price of good two, with very close complement or very close substitutes, should I say, we're going to have a very large change in quantity demanded. So assume we begin with Xboxes and Playstations being exactly the same price and now the price of Xbox goes up 10% well because they're similar goods a lot of people are going to switch from Xboxes to Playstations because there's a higher price so we could say something like a 50% increase in demand for Playstations as a result of this and that's going to give us a cross elasticity of 5 which is obviously quite a high number for every 10% change in price of Xbox, we have a 50% increase in demand for PlayStations. And we, we could go even further with this. We could say there's a 150% increase in PlayStation demand, which would give us an XED of 15. And obviously, as we keep getting higher and higher XEDs, this means that these are closer substitutes. So that's what our XED means. If it's positive, we have substitutes, and higher XEDs are going to be closer substitutes. The flip side of this is complement, and as it's the flip side, we're obviously going to have a negative cross elasticity of demand. And if we think of our XED equation again, we have 
percentage change in quantity demanded of good two is going to be divided by our percentage change in price of good one or we can switch the one and twos around it doesn't really matter as long as we just keep track of the fact that these are different goods well if we have an increase in price of our good one we're going to have a positive number on the bottom but now we're thinking of complement goods so goods that go together and are purchased together so we can think here of say tennis rackets and tennis balls you can't really use a tennis racket without a tennis ball and you're not going to have much of a use for a tennis ball without a tennis racket of course you could play catch or something but most of the time you buy a tennis ball to play tennis so if we have an increase in the price for say tennis rackets well fewer people are going to buy them and we're going to have a reduction in demand therefore for tennis balls so we have a negative value on the top of this equation now and a negative divided by a positive is going to give us a negative XED. So negative cross elasticity means we have complements. Increase in the price of one good is going to reduce the demand for its complement goods. And that's what we said here actually. So that's complement goods. Hopefully that's somewhat straightforward given we've just discussed our substitute goods. It's just the opposite. And the final point to note is we've talked about positive and negative cross elasticities well what about an XED of zero and this tells us that we have independent goods so a change in the price of one good will have no effect at all on the demand for the other good again XED is equal to percentage change in quantity demanded of good two over percentage change in price of good one consider that our price of good one changes let's say we have a 10% change well, these goods are completely independent, so whatever changes in price in the first good, our change in quantity demanded is going to be zero for the other good because this market has no effect on the other market. So this is going to give us an XED of zero. Some examples we might think of is, say, bananas and fighter jets, for example. So if we have an increase in the price of fighter jets, what impact is this going to have on the demand for bananas? Well, maybe it will have an effect, but it, there's no obvious relationship between those two goods that I can think of. So we're likely to have an XED that's somewhere around zero. So that's independent goods, but and actually it's not too rare of a, of a thing, independent goods. Like not every market is interrelated. So when we, when we discussed unit elasticity and a PED that was equal to one, that's quite rare that uh, our elasticity would be equal to one. But with cross elasticity, this might be a slightly more common thing. We have lots of goods. We have lots of examples we can think of of goods where their markets aren't really related. So remembering that an XED equal to zero is for an independent good is definitely something to keep in mind. So hopefully this was useful. If it was, please leave a like rating. Make sure to check out the playlist for other videos like this one and subscribe to add some econ to your subscription feed.